I lady teabagged you. Bye. <laughs> nice, delicate lady teabag oh, for the kids. So you literally just came here from recording VO for Archer. Yeah. And by the time this is out, season 10 of Archer is mm -hmm. going to have started. I just recorded the last episode of the upcoming season. Yeah. Was so. that really emotional for you? No, I'm dead inside. That's Not cool. really. Um, but no, it's really it's really funny. Actually, I've been doing the show for a decade now. I've been doing it so long that um, I'm both like deeply emotionally invested in the show and like also just kind of like, eh. Um, and today when we when we started, I said like, guys, like what episode is this? Like I had no idea. And they were like, it's the last one. I was like, oh, all right. It'll happen outside yeah. the show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah you does. didn't have time to get emotional about it. No, you didn't have time to ha get in I your head. I haven't had time to urinate or shower for years. So That's great. It's just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just all a big kind of smelly blur. Uh, let me start over. My name's Archer. Lana Kane. And I'm sorry, but have we met? If we had, you'd remember. I think that's one of the things that's so interesting about how Archer has developed is like it had that original constraint of being secret agents mm -hmm. and then it was like, no, throw it out right, the window. Right, I'm done writing right. this. And fans have struggled <laughs> with it. I think there are fans yeah. that really love it. I think there are fans that have struggled with it. You know, what's exciting about um, our show is that it's dynamic for us. Like, you know, what people don't understand is like making the same show for 10 years is not interesting to the people on the show. And in fact, my favorite episode is the one where we were Coke dealers. I'm really hoping we go back to doing that. Also, I want I wonder for super fans, at what point is it, does it get old for you as a viewer? You know what I mean? And so for us on Archer, the whole thing is like, how do we keep making this feel dynamic and new and fresh and different and, and still make sure that there's, you know, something to discover. I imagine you don't have a lot of time for like, yeah, fun and painful. relaxing. Yeah. I mean, I think one thing about, play, especially anything that has like a strong narrative or like really, really like robust campaign is like, mm -hmm. I want to live in that game. And yeah. I, you can't sit down and play a game like that for 45 minutes. So you need like something be, shorter. I, either I need something shorter or I need my life to change. Cause yeah. I, you know, I used to love coming home at like eight o'clock and like playing until three or four in the morning. And I just can't do that and also like function in my work now. Yeah. So, um, and there's nothing like less satisfying than just like, playing to a checkpoint and like putting the controller down. Is that why you made this this cocktail line that you have now? Uh, bottled cocktails? Because you don't want to take the time to mix an actual drink. <laughs> no! To drown my feelings of sorrow for not being able to game. <laughs> my feelings. Um, you, yeah, I mean, yes and no. I think it's like a like part of a larger philosophy about yeah. like, trying to make life easier. I just started batching cocktails myself and just yeah. keeping them in the fridge so I could just pour out two ounces and like go sit on the couch. Yeah. And then I thought it would be great if you could buy these in the store. Well, we're going to take some time now to actually, we're going to make you sit down and play a game. Oh, Hope no. Hope that's okay. Okay. <laughs> we're going to play Rainbow Six Siege. We're gonna play Siege. Uh, so I I love this particular franchise. I played so many hours of Rainbow Six Vegas and I loved that game because mm -hmm. I really like cooperative play a lot. And I like strategy and I like stealth. Ooh, and crawling up. <laughs> so <laughs> sneakers. Oh, I'm sneaking up on ones and zeros. You have a big like missile launcher if you press right button. Do I? Fun. Hell yeah. Ooh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I did it again! Yay! Yay. <laughs> like, you're a liar! You lied to me! I'm sorry I lied to you! <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my god, that was so entertaining! Oh okay, no. wait a I'm turning bright wait. red! <laughs> Caught on camera, lying oh my god, to Aisha That was Tyler. really entertaining. <laughs> right. I feel like maybe the explosion might have attracted some attention. This is suffering. This is suffering. Oh, he's so oh, he's a sneak he's <laughs> you guys will bleep that out, won't you? <laughs> You'll bleep that out for the interwebs. <laughs> I am I'm a bad feminist because every time that oh, word you're, is no, used, you're a great I feminist. think it's the funniest you're fucking You're a great thing feminist because you don't let language dictate how you feel about yourself in the world, man. I use that word to show a motherfucker. You can't do shit on <laughs> me. You can't weaponize a goddamn thing. Yeah. I, I think you took out the missile launcher again. I just want you to be aware oh, of that. Oh, thank you. Before you... Before I shoot it at a wall and yes. back into my own mouth. <laughs> and it's normal experience feelings of anxiety around this day, champ. I'm not going to relapse. You're at a critical juncture in your life. You are moving in a big way towards directing things? Moving in a direction was just a, a function of like kid, nerd kid me who used to pay for like one ticket at 11 o'clock and then sit in the movie theater until 10 at night, like going from movie theater to movie yeah, theater, yeah. just like consuming as much movie as I could and playing video games, you know, on the breaks. Um, I, I mean, that's that, like, those are my most formative kind of 
creative and psychological years. And so I just love movies first. And I think if you love films, you want to understand them better and then you want to try to make them yourself. You talk about like being a kid and loving movies and loving games. And when I look at your career, you've worked on a lot of things that you mm -hmm. originally loved mm -hmm. as a fan. Mm -hmm. Was there a moment where you kind of chose movies over games or was it always like, okay, this is my hobby and this oh, is what I want to make? I mean, I've been in, I've been in three games. Yeah. Um, and that was really fun because that just also came out of fandom. Like, mm -hmm. I will say this about being in a game, like, sorry to all the people out there who love video games, it's not that fun being in a game. <laughs> it just really isn't that fun. Like, it seems like fun for you because you're playing me, but I was just shrieking in a sound studio for 11 hours and losing my voice and like trying to die 43 days. Wait, that, yeah, so did you did you have to do a bunch of like the For each, I did like 111 and... death rattles, man. I was so tired. I can't even get my head around this. Like, what if I forgot the pill, then I'm just locked out of my entire digital life? I want to talk about your directing though, because you have a new film that you're going to direct, which is tentatively called Vigilante. Yeah, it's yeah, an Urban Winkler production. Yes, yeah. So what drew you to that project? The movies that I loved most when I was a kid were genre films. I, I'm a huge action fan and uh, this this is an action piece. And the only movie that I loved when I was a kid that was like, had like a female you know star and it was the Terminator franchise and uh, you know, Sarah Connor. The first Terminator movie is great, but T2 when she's like doing the pull-ups on the bed turned sideways. I mean, I've seen that movie like 50 times. When I was and a it's kid. still a perfect movie. It's, it's so, I just want to make movies like the movies that I loved with people that I recognize and that look like me and you know that look like people that I know and uh, that feel different and fresh so it was an opportunity to kind of like lean into a genre that I've always really been passionate about. So your first film was shot in a week and mm -hmm. it was all inside a car. Mm -hmm. Is there a similar challenge with this upcoming film? This one is not that limited, no, but there's some signature stuff of mine in this movie because I really like silence and containment. Those are my my things. It's like, you know, forcing the audience to be inside the movie and I love claustrophobia. I love panic. <laughs> What I like about me is that I sound like an adult when I play this game. Can you just throw a fucking grenade at me, you prick? <laughs> no, that was oh, no. for a while. Oh, no. Yeah, I killed myself. <laughs> it's okay, you're not dead. Just okay, good. Just blinded for life. Hell there yeah, we go. Oh, it. are you kidding me? I think he's down. No, I don't think he is. Oh, he's not. Damn no, it. No, no, there I died again. Why is he awful? Good times, good times, guys. Let's turn this into like a death litany of like video, just like hot cuts of me dying. Yeah. Uh, Cause that, apparently that's why I came. What's this 25, is that my health? Yeah, yeah. Somebody do something. <laughs> Somebody give me a band-aid. Is there, are there band-aids in this game? <laughs> maybe in the kitchen, maybe there's like a junk drawer. Is there, know? is there like, are, the there, are there med packs in this game? <laughs> <laughs> Not, I haven't seen Fuck any. Fuck off. Aisha, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is bullshit. Come on, let's go. Okay, let's go. Bitch, come on. Thank you. That was my <laughs> that was my fucking opinion too. You made me say it? Yeah, I did make you say God. it. They're gonna be admitted to you. Oh, they're oh, right oh, there. Oh, 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 snap. I should have used her as a human shield. For, I'm so sorry we like brought you here and then stressed you the fuck out. You know what, actually that was wildly entertaining. <laughs> I just <laughs> spent a lot of time dying. It was very relaxing. You know, dying yeah. is very relaxing. You're like, oh, I don't have to try anymore. Most of the time I think gaming is like a big, it's always like a big stress release. You know, I will say that like the first Walking Dead. Clementine. The, yeah, yeah, with Clementine. Yeah. Like I just cried hysterically in the game. And I remember people were like, you're gonna cry. I was like, I don't cry. Oh, look, look at me. Do you think I cry? And I, <laughs> I was crying and my friend was like, just finished the game. I was like, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yeah, and then Telltale went away. Well, that's a good ending. Guys, I like to end things on a high note. <laughs> I like, first Clementine died and then Telltale died. And now, and I'm, then I died. We're just going to play this backwards. Is we're going to start on the low note. <laughs>